Hi, right, welcome back. Giant Bombs coverage of E3 2019 continues. I'm Jeff Gersman. We're here to talk to another couch of wonderful guests. We've got Scott Scritchard uh, from Sega. How you doing, sir? All right, how are you? I'm doing awesome. Excellent. Uh, Mark McDonald of Enhance Games. Always a pleasure. Out Thank there you. En enhancing the couch. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, I try. And Ash to Crawl uh, from Square Enix. How's it going? Good, man. How you doing? Doing really well. Cool. Doing really well. So, uh, all of you working on video it's games. It's a very themed a, Yeah, I like yeah. it. You got some yeah. Yeah. Alex, 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 Alex you know, does he gets his, out there, his research. puts his things together. Now, Scott, you work in the localization department uh, over at Sega. You've worked on uh, the One Yakuza life. game. Fifth Yakuza game at this point. Yeah. Judgment coming up in two weeks. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, it's exciting. It's been really exciting. I mean, Yakuza seems like it just really took off. I mean, when it was initially being released, it had its fans, but now... You know, consumer tastes have changed. Maybe people are just a little more ready for it. What's it been like, kind of, seeing I don't, the series? I don't know. It's, it's it's an interesting thing because I think people would have been ready for it before, but it was so mis talked about in a way. It was like, oh, that's that Japanese GTA, and it's it's mm. just not that. You know, yeah. it's it's got so much more heart and, and life to it and uh, humor that I think was kind of getting glossed over. And with what Yakuza Zero, what that did. By allowing people to kind of jump into the game without having that number, that intimidating Y5, Y4, what do I have right. to play before that? Yeah. Like just jump in on Y0, you yeah. know, that, that really kind of reignited the series in the West, which is really cool. I will say though, speaking of numbers, I absolutely cannot keep track of, especially on the Japan side, on the Ryuga Gotoku side, like, wait, this one's the remake of that one, and that one's the remake of the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets a little and wild. Because they, they stopped even just straight out numbering them. There's the offshoots, there's the ones that are back in the, the, uh, the, the Edo period. And right, the, right. Like, all over the place. So I'm, I'm constantly asking, like, okay, I'm going to start I'm gonna start playing Yakuza now, finally. Uh -huh. and, and I have, yeah, I know people are super, super into the series, and I'm like, okay, where do I get into it? And it seems like that answer changes every once in a while. Does it? Because I feel like we've been saying Yakuza Zero for like. Is that still? We're just like that holding the, the line on Yakuza Zero. With, <laughs> okay. And Judgment's going to introduce kind of a, a new entry point for us because it's a side cast. It's you know it's it's set in the same world, but mm. it's, you don't have to know anything about it. But mm. that's kind of the goal is to create these entry points for people. Because yeah, you're right. People are constantly like, Wait, I love these, but I don't. My friends play it. Where do I start? Where do I start? Right, right. We've, I think we've held the line pretty well. At just. Getting Yakuza Zero. So in Zero is that the '80s one? Yeah. Okay. That, okay. That that is the one that I've heard. Yeah. And and that '80s that that was I mean that was where I got into it. I mean you know like I probably tried to play those games a couple of times back you know PS2 and right. Not so, but but I I played those PS2 ones. And was like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I think part of that was, God, I, I wish I could remember the name. of the, All I remember is him going, hmm, what fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, when it was the, English. What the, hell is his, what the hell is his name? The guy. He was in Reservoir Dogs. Oh, uh, Michael Madsen. Yeah, Michael Madsen. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was, he, played the, he played a character yeah. in Shimano. And so all of the marketing around that game coming out was like, we got Michael Madsen. Yeah. And it wasn't even like, hey, check out Japanese GTA. It was just like, we're going to send you this video of a recording session with Michael Madsen. And it's him just like... <laughs> Poorly, I mean, yeah, not yeah. reading these lines of dialogue yeah. particularly well into a microphone, and you look at it and go like, "Nice going, Michael." Matt. <laughs> yeah, thanks to you for bringing check. us yeah. Yakuza, uh, the Yakuza. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the Yakuza. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and, and, and so I mean, localizing them all over again in a sense, and, and keeping the original dialogue. It, it seems like it's you know it's, it's exposing players to something that's a lot more closer to the the yeah. original vision for the game. Yeah, right? that comes back to people just being ready to accept Japanese content. Like you said, right. you know, yeah. people are just like, it's okay to feel like it's a little bit foreign if you don't know Japan because it's taking you there in, in a way. Yeah. And that's that's something we strive to to make sure that it comes across, right? Yeah, I think that's why Yakuza Zero ended up being such a good entry point for me. Like with with the remakes and stuff, it was just like you can. You can smell the cigarette smoke yeah. pouring off of that game, and it's like, oh god, this is all oh, these cars. Just the look of everything. That's like that's it's the just the look of everything is so perfect. Right. Like man, I I want to go to there. Yeah, the, the uh, detail, the detail, the work, the devil's in the details on all that stuff, and they're yeah. they're great at it. Yeah. Uh, Mark, how's things going at Enhanced? Are you? I mean, things are good. Yeah, it's kind of a chill E3 yeah. for us, as I think it is for for a lot of people. Definitely. Um, but uh, we are busy back in Tokyo on things. Cool. Things and stuff. Yeah. Stuff and things. I like things. Um, I can probably talk about. We made a chair out of speakers. <laughs> so there's that. You guys yeah. Sound busy. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are like, we are just noses to the grindstone. Yeah. It is 
It's super intense. Get me more Serwin Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the uh, so we did the synesthesia suit when we debuted Res Infinite. Uh, you you tried it on. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's so still my, that's still my PlayStation icon. Nice. It's me in the suit. <laughs> awesome. <Man. laughs> yes. Oh, that's that's fucking badass. Um, but so we. I say we, Miz, uh, really wanted to kind of take that to the next level and experiment more in that space. And so we made something that you don't have to have two people fit on you like a samurai, like samurai armor, <laughs> right. which we did yeah. with the synesthesia suit. Um, so it's basically a chair made out of not subwoofers, but kind of what would be subwoofers. Mm -hmm. And you lie down in it, and there's like this bespoke musical thing. I don't, I, I don't, you I don't, reinvented D-Box, basically. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I, I always stop myself from explaining it too much because usually I'm telling somebody who's come to the office and I'm like, here, just go, let's go and try it. <laughs> right, yeah. Next time and you're in Tokyo. And that's why, here's the speaker chair. That's right. <laughs> Pull back the curtain. Yeah. Uh, but next time you're in Tokyo, which you know I'm yeah, going to talk no, to you about know, every time. I, I know. Uh, God, I just, it's... Hmm. Next time you're in Tokyo it's for Tokyo a, Game it, Show. It has been a decade. Next year, yeah. next gen is happening, right. theoretically. Yeah. Maybe that's a good... Seems good like time. If, a if good past time. Tokyo game shows are any example, right? right. They'll save some stuff for them. Yeah, so totally. That'd be a good excuse. Yeah. If not before then. Yeah. If nothing else to try the speaker chair. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all. I'll, I'll go back and say I need budget to go. We. I got. Might be I like a mecha suit chair. or something by that point. <laughs> if it's, if right. It's late next year. Then. Yeah. Uh, next iteration might have been invented. Or uh, Ash, it, you know, you have people sitting in speaker chairs to play Final Fantasy XIV all the time. I'm sure. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we're just here. Um, I've been, we have an expansion coming out in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Final Fantasy XIV Online. It's uh, it's been really cool having people get their first hands on it. Uh, we got two new jobs and two new uh, races for the game as well. So it's been really cool just to see people. We're kind of giving them an opportunity to try the first like uh, dungeon boss or raid boss that mm -hmm. they play, uh, and uh, we reward them by either giving them a shirt if they do or if they. Could. And our win rate's really bad. <laughs> it's Titania, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard. I heard she's tough. Yeah, it's been really tough. Are, are you, is it literally like if you don't beat the boss, you don't get the shirt? Yeah. Or do you, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's brutal. You save a little money that yeah. way. On People are worried. You make a whole that. bunch of shirts that you have to get rid of somehow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, just day three, you're like, hey, you lost. Here, take two shirts anyway. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to look them back. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV has been a, a game I feel like I've gotten close to trying sure. and then been like, I don't, who has time for an MMO? <laughs> Certainly not me in this point in my life. Yeah. Uh, but man, it's the people, uh, you know, post World of Warcraft, mm -hmm. which is, you know, World of Warcraft, obviously it's still going. But, yeah. Um, 14 seems like the game that, that really, you know, post the relaunch, all that stuff, mm -hmm. like the people that are passionate about that game are really over the top <laughs> wild for it. Yeah. And it's been exciting to see, you know, it's, it's, it, that's why I've come so close to trying it, I think. It's, sure. It's been that, that thing of like, man, it's, people are really talking about this. I have zero affinity for Final Fantasy. <laughs> Don't have time for an MMO, but like, hmm. <laughs> I, well, the one thing I would say is, uh, if, first of all, if anybody wants to learn about Final Fantasy XIV Online, we've, uh, we did a no-clip documentary with Daniel Dwyer. Yeah. He flew out there. I just want to plug him real quick. Yeah. Yeah, he, he did an amazing job. And part of it was kind of giving him the access to like the, the CEO and to Yoshida you know, right. on the development team to really tell that relaunch story because it is nuts. Uh, yeah, it, totally. It, I, I, a little background real quick. I... Um, they originally offered me a, a position out there to, to kind of come and run the business marketing side of 14, like six years or seven years ago, and I took a different gig. But I always kept an eye on it. Yeah. And then a bunch of my friends I, uh, who were playing MMOs, who, who worked at Blizzard, who played World of Warcraft, they all started playing it. Yeah. And I kind of like just mm -hmm. heard about it, heard about it, and then uh, you know years went by, and I kind of ended up going over there. And I really wanted to see that story too. So we kind of had Danny kind of tell it for us because it's yeah. it's an amazing relaunch story. And Yoshida San, the development team, like they they were a, honest. It, too. Yeah, it was a mea culpa. Like they yeah. really we were kind of honest about be, being a mea culpa of how it really changed the the whole business foundation for them. Yeah, uh, and to it, relaunch it's, it. it's the sort of thing that you always hear is kind of impossible with an MMO. It's yeah. like, hey, we're going to turn this thing around. It's like, no, you're not. That's not how this There's works. You launch the game, it died. Yeah. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. Like, Run two Final games Fantasy 16 can be the online <laughs> how one. How do you do with the again? numbers? <laughs> when people are like, hey, how does, how do, where do I, what Final Fantasies do I start with? <laughs> you know, what, I, what I would say 11, to, 14 that's it, that's it. <laughs> no what I would say to that is uh, like 14's got this this ever evolving uh, main story quest that it kind of a lot of people that you you talk to would say that it is probably their favorite Final Fantasy story mm. and uh, it, it's always evolving every three months or so we got new story content and you know expansions that come out so 
it, it's something that they're passionate about from the beginning for, from Realm Reborn, and it's continuing on for them in, in a way that maybe some of the other Final Fantasy main land titles, once you're done, you're kind of done with it. Right. So you can always revisit it. But then it's also married to these MMO tropes, mm -hmm. right? Your rage, your dungeons, and, and kind of being familiar with that side of things, how player housing. And then it's not like a celebration of the Final Fantasy franchise. Like, there's a lot of really cool elements that kind of harken back to some of the other Final Fantasy elements, characters, mm -hmm. um, things of that nature. So, like, I, for for me, it's pretty easy to really talk about. Um, yeah. But in this day and age, you're right. You know, there's there's only really two subscription MMOs left, like with WoW and 14. And I would say that a lot of people kind of flow in and flow out. Uh, and right. uh, you know, when content comes, it's we obviously hey, get people come back coming, in, come back in for yeah, six yeah. months or whatever. Yeah. And but we're at our you know highest level we've ever been, and this is six years in since the relaunch, and that's yeah. kind of unheard of too. I mean, right? Can yeah. we talk about like sure. that? Final Fantasy is pretty much the only MMO in Japan, right? Like War, Warcraft well, never Quest, came over. Dragon Quest. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Ten, Ten came out yeah, and yeah, did yeah. and did very well. Yeah. But um, something that that I want you to talk about is oh. <laughs> there's a TV show. I'm sure it's in Japan only. I think it was Netflix. Dead of Light. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I watched that all the way through. <laughs> yeah, you guys liked it. Yeah, yeah. My PR uh, well. guys freaking out back there. Uh, no, no, I think uh, Dead of Light is an interesting story. Correct uh, me if I'm wrong, because my, my memories of it are a little. I did not watch the entire thing through, but but. <laughs> <laughs> the son, who's like, has an estranged relationship with his father, uh -huh. yeah. meets his father online, not unknowing that it's his father, yep. through the through the magic of Final Fantasy IV, uh, XIV, uh -huh. meets his father, yep. befriends his father, they go questing and whatnot, and then through, you know, hijinks ensue, yeah. and they discover, oh wait, you are... My father. Whoever, you're like this, this cute fairy character in the <laughs> game, but actually... <laughs> You're my father. Yeah. Okay. And they reconnect that way. That I, you know, I think that was a great way. This is a to, TV show. Yeah. That, like a legitimate TV show. It's actually show. being made into a movie now. As okay. Well. Yeah. We just announced that at our more uh, power. At our more power to it. Yeah. I think uh, it's. It Did was it come a, out in English? Can people watch this? Now? It's, it's on uh, U.S. Netflix, but it it's, it's it's subtitled. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's still. Uh, let's check it out. Uh, the, father of Light. Dad of Light. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a great telling of a story of people connecting through <laughs> the uh, the wonderful magic. Sorry to make you do this. Sorry to make you do this. That was, that was, that was, <laughs> yeah, that my was wife, well she doesn't really play MMOs, but she saw it. She thought it was pretty cool, too. Yeah. She teared up a little bit about it. So it's actually an emotional, cool story. So, yeah. I mean, you think about, you know, other ways that video games have been worked into television shows sure. or, like, uh, just, you know, a anime about games <laughs> and, and some of the other stuff that's come along. Yeah. It's really rotten stuff. So, <laughs> that, that sounds all right. I don't want to shit on anybody's stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm here. Don't worry. I watched the first two episodes of that PSO2 show. Oh, oh, you I actually you mentioned it like, online games. PSO2. PSO2. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah. You're right. The yeah. Xbox I was just cool. thinking about Warcraft. Like the the, the fact that War I still don't understand why Warcraft never came out in Japan. I don't Japan is very like rabid, very loyal fans to that type I of pitched, game. I was at Blizzard so for like the first five, six years I worked there. I pitched more how I'm bringing it to India and I thought about it. I'm like the Torin and Cows probably not gonna work in India. Like there's certain <laughs> regions they choose not to put yeah. it out in. Yeah. Sure. I don't know why about uh, with Japan. I think in certain ways, uh, both at Activision and Blizzard, I think Square Enix does localization for a lot of their titles too. Huh. I don't know. There was never oh. a crossover. I mean, yeah. that would be a, the look would be a pain, as I'm sure you know on yeah. 14, and you certainly know. Like the fact, what you guys do on those Yakuza games is amazing. Oh, like, thank how you. How enormous they are. I mean, having done a bunch of uh, of Loke stuff, but like the keeping the quality up and doing it at the speed, especially that you're doing it at now, like it seems like it's gotten a lot. The turnarounds become faster and faster. We get, I mean, yeah, it's become a little bit more like clockwork with our team. We we kind of know the franchise, we right. know that we know this like the parameters and all that kind of stuff, and then you know it just it's going. But that's why we did for for judgment, you know, really pushed ourselves. We got um, French, Italian, German, Spanish subtitles. Now we did the dub. We brought back the dub after the first time in ten years, and no Michael Madsen. Damn. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. God damn, you couldn't get him. I understand. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, he's a busy guy. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah, I know. Like, sorry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that the the, yeah, the the localization of those games has been, you know, I, I don't read any Japanese, so I can't compare it. But like, it, it's it's got a vibe to it. It's not. It doesn't. You know, a lot of games get localized in that very kind of staid, kind of very cold way. But I think the the dialogue in those games really helps the whole thing kind of come alive. And right. That's been yeah. That's been exciting to see. I think like more games getting that style of treatment, like localization in general, just feels like it's just treating the become, audience like adults. Sometimes sure, it just totally. means the right. world. You know. Just yeah. Like the 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 content in those games is built for 
adults. You know, it's not it's right. not catering to this like weird like kind of you know we're trying to get the teens into our game. You yeah. know, it's like it's just adults talking about whatever they talk about. <laughs> but there's also but there's also humor in those games, like you mentioned, and that is so freaking hard to to, to mm. bring over. I just want to say there's a there's a Ash. Well, I'll just say Ash Ketchum reference in the new game that is, <laughs> uh, you'll know it when you see it, people. <laughs> Come back to this years from now and you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. It's really, really well done. Like, yeah. Uh, Thank so, you. So it seems like... Do you have metrics for people that, that play the game, but it would in Japanese with subtitles instead of versus? We've action? never done the dub before. Oh, really? So this is huh. the first time, and we're gonna, yeah. I mean, we we're that would try be interesting. Make, I think a lot of the fans are like, "Thanks for doing the dub. I'm not going to use it." You know, but right. like for for a lot right. of the yeah. um, you know for for what we've heard for a lot of people is like you know I I recommend this to my friends, but they don't read subtitles. Mm. You know, and you get that kind of attitude. That's you know and that's fair. Like there's a lot of people out there who just struggle with subtitles, you're doing things, you know, you've got your life going on at the same time, and right. if you're not, like, 100% yeah. locked on your TV at the, at the lower no, third come of the on, let's be honest, that's a shitty American attitude <laughs> that I think only exists in America. Fair, like, fair. Fucking read subtitles. Well, I think like, for, for <laughs> games, like, I'm engaged. Right. But, like, when it comes to television, movies, stuff like that, like, I usually have to go with dubs because I am just straight up doing three other things. Yeah. My only thing is, if that's the only way to get the the content, like, you should be okay with it, right? Like, I yeah. totally yeah. understand if you have the two options and you have a preference one or the other, yeah. that's cool, right. but, like, it is something that it's weird, like, living in Japan, because, like, a lot of people prefer to see movies subtitled mm. there. Like, foreign movies subtitled. Yeah, there. absolutely. And, and that's, that's true here, too. They're just really used to it, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. That is that is definitely here, but it's here it's, like, a more hardcore fandom, or right. at least, like, the image of yeah, it you're is. Absolutely right. And in Japan, it's just very mass market. You go to mm. you just got to have your subs versus dubs battle. I mean... Yeah, know, just, just, go, like just go in the streets, you know? Right. Like, <laughs> we'll take it outside right now. I don't even know how it's, it's funny, and the MMO side of it, like, there's a lot of, qu like, side quests and stuff for 14, which, yeah. uh, which isn't voiced over. Yeah. So you're kind of already forced to kind of read the quest dialogue text and then some of that stuff. But then you get hit with these these you know, cinematic scenes, and then the, the dub or the voiceover comes on. It kind of is cool as you don't have to be forced to watch it all the time, right? There's sometimes where you want to read the quest style, like there's sometimes you just want to You want to talk about localization speed, your team is on fire. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, the team, they, they do an amazing job out there. Man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, the it was localizing an MMO content. seems yeah, insane a lot of because content. it has to be the same day yeah. and you don't lock it down until right before. Yeah, so. a lot of content. And it's also like, you know, Spanish patching quests and breaking French. all kinds of stuff. Right? Oh, yeah, man, yeah. That's, yeah, the... the the nature of an MMO combined with trying to release multiple territories sounds like uh, just you probably need a lot of people that are very good at logistics yeah. to handle those <laughs> those sorts of situations. Yeah. And they're great writers. They're sitting there, you know, it's all that like, you know, they have my sword kind of writing. Like, and it's all coming, like, it never falters. It never dips in that quality. And, like, that's I, so much respect for the cool. team. Yeah. Do you miss it, Mark? I mean, not to say that you know, there's none of it. You know, you hands, but, right? yeah, 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 I did, yeah. But, um, you know, Tetris. Yeah, not, yeah, not I'm a sure it has to be localized to a certain extent. The localization but of Tetris was not was not up to snuff. No, I think <laughs> just okay. didn't, didn't really. Yeah. It was like a with journey, of, yeah. journey yeah. of emotion and and you know crazy feelings. No, that feelings, that was right? totally, you know, I mean, that's fun. that's exactly that's what I want out poetry. of poetry. Uh, <laughs> no, I do. I absolutely do. Like sometimes, like uh, like working on a game. Uh, I remember like Fire Emblem was a great experience because. You can tailor it. I don't know like what your guys' tools are like, but being able to actually see the text in the game and, and, and iterate on it a bunch, Nintendo you'd be tools. really surprised at how much that makes a difference. Even as you're playing the game, okay, and then editing the text, playing the game, you're seeing it, but when you're actually seeing the timing and this one comes after that one, um, are you guys able to, to, to see the game and, and play the game as you're working on it in in the target language in English? For I mean it's it's coming online to that point, but like, yeah. you know, for, for all the previous titles, they'd already been done before we even got to start. Because right. we're, we're so far behind, right? Sure. So, you know, we were we were looking at the actual in game and we can just a you know, go to screen, go to screen, go to screen. Yeah. For judgment, it was, you know, we finally got to the point where we could start before they finished. And we, oh, you know, when we go yeah. to the game, everyone's just sitting there T posed, not talking. And we're like, oh great! Right, this, this is, is a new not challenge. Better. <laughs> yeah, Did you guys do lip flap on a Judgment? Did you match the uh, lip flap for the for the English voices? There's two types of cutscenes in the game. One of them is pre baked, and we had to match. We did ADR on that. And oh, then cool, cool. The so other you type... wrote it to the Japanese existing exactly. lip flap, which is a nightmare. A nightmare. It's really yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah. um, Sometimes in Japanese, they'll just be like, Scott. 
Yes. Scott. Yes. But like, just say your name over and over again. And yeah. In English, it comes off super. I mean, it does in Japanese too. It right. It comes off super cheesy. You yeah. have to find ways to cheat that with it's other like a words. Trope, but yeah. 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 Um, but all the other type of cutscenes, the in-game cutscenes, they, they, they did run that um, through some lip flap tech, and they re cool. readjusted it. And so, yeah, when when you're playing in English, you get the English lip flap. When you're playing in Japanese, you get Japanese lip flap. That makes a that makes a difference. Like it sounds like a little thing, but it mm -hmm. really does it's, like it's make it's a huge. difference. Where yeah, yeah, and it's it's crazy that you know like the technology got to that point where you can kind of just feed it. And well, I mean, obviously, I'm sure it has to be tweaked. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 exactly. And touched up, but exactly. like you know, feeding the script gets you at least part of the way there. Uh huh. As it's opposed to really just like good. having to manually do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think with Metal Gear Solid Four, they had to like literally sit there and like Ryan Payne would come over and be like, you know, memes or nano machine, and they they sit there and they'd be like, oh, 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 and they would like <laughs> literally like move the lips. Yeah. And be like, no, 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 this is wrong. Keep still. Yeah. Right. But um, but you had like my greatest localization nightmare happen basically recently with Judgment. Uh here we go. Where uh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Pierre got caught with. Uh, Little nose flap, yes. if you know what I mean. His, <laughs> his nose in the cookie jar, uh, so to speak. And then you guys kept the release date the just, same. Just recast. Difficult. Threw all that out. Cutscenes. That is. That must have been like four alarm fire. <laughs> all was, hands on deck. It uh, was a four alarm fire. All hands on deck. All right, all, all credit to Ryuga Gotoku Studios, who were you know the discussion happened. It was. We talked about keeping the release date. They said we can do it, and it, you know, just lists of things occurred. You know, and right. it was just you know, go down the line. Let's get it all done. And everyone was just firing on all cylinders just to make sure we held that date. That was what the fans wanted. They were just like, yeah, you know, please, please don't delay it for this. And we said, okay, you got that. Did you guys? Did that affect you guys? Very much. Did it affect us in the sense that we had to do work? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, but what? So what work? How did it trickle down? To I mean, yeah. it's you know, it's it's a whole giant asset swap, right? Like, it all yeah. comes mm -hmm. down to m making sure all that stuff didn't break anything else. So and, in testing and yeah. the QA yeah, exactly. and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like you didn't have to go recast like the the English voice. No, the English. We we asked yeah. them that. I was like, oh man, is this going to affect our English voice? Do we need to redo anything? Yeah. And they're like, no, we're going to make sure that it doesn't affect your guy. Yeah. That, you know, again, RGG, just incredible team. Awesome. Yeah, that's uh, it's a strange situation. I guess you know, like just yeah. that's a cultural thing. It's a very that, like Japan you just don't. Yeah, it's a, it's very very Japan. Yeah, they took uh, another a band maybe two years before that was my first ex experience with it. Was it like, Kage and Asuka or whatever mm -hmm. got caught similar thing I think it was meth or something there and it was just like well all CDs off the shelves like the next day like wow. all everything every like drama that had featured their music off of you know take the used copies of it off of here like it was really like this person never existed like let's right. fucking scrub this clean like Westworld <laughs> fucking style and like. does that ever is there a cooldown period on that where suddenly it's That's like, That's a good actually, question. Hey, or is it just, yeah. I, Maybe you guys know. I actually That's, don't know. That is no. a culture that, I don't You're know. You're just gone for, for, is for that good, a thing? Maybe? I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. yeah that, I, if that happened, yeah. If that happened in America, it would. It'd be like, uh, oh, well, you like, yeah. should deal with that, I guess. You <laughs> have to recast Mark Madsen, what was the list? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. That's, that's why he's not in the game. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it just didn't make a lot of sense to keep him in there with everything else that's yeah. going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez, um, Mark. What's the, yes. you know? I know you, you said you're you're working on stuff. Do you, yes. do you have any kind of window as to when we can maybe hear about what's actually what's soon. next? Because I, I figure like I'm, right I'm looking at like release calendars for when Tetris came out last year and trying to do math like contract math in my head and be like. <laughs> Seems like they'd have something to say about something Make about some that one of these days. I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> Jeff, um, but uh, I don't know. I just I still have Res Infinite installed on my personal computer, and it's a oh. fantastic place to play it. Yes, your IBM Tandy. Yes, I said it's a it's a 286 SX. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're pretty nice. excited about it. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I just uh, I, I'm not obviously you know not saying hey, announce yeah. a thing. Um, <laughs> No, uh, I, I'll say like uh, you know we've heard that uh, question from a lot of people, mm. and uh, it'd be really nice to have an answer for that. Um, <laughs> this and, guy, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you're on both sides. Is right? you, you know exactly how to not say it. Yeah. I'll say, I'll say, yeah. There, there's things happening with uh, with Tetris Effect. Some of which I think are pretty obvious. Some of which are maybe a little less obvious. But mm. that's one of the things that we're really busy with right now. Is 
is is um, is still that and like continuing to support it. And we had a great reaction. I'm super honored. I don't know if the statute of limitations is up to talk about the game of the year. I think it's, not, it's officially not a spoiler. Yet. Is that uh, yeah? Is that I think, cool? I think we can talk about. Because I literally yeah. have not said anything online <laughs> or in social media or anything because I don't want to like spoil it for anybody. But yeah. if you haven't, stop now. Okay. Listen to all of the the giant bomb. Game of the Year deliberations, but um, but that was that was huge for us. Like to be totally honest, like that was that was really cool. Um, getting the uh, it's the a GB, hell of a game. GB I mean, Goaty is what we call, we stopped calling yeah. it Tetris Effect internally. We call it GB <laughs> Goaty. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, we we were lucky enough to get a lot of uh, a, a lot of good reviews, and we got some um, some some attention from uh, some awards and stuff like that, which is actually makes a huge difference like that mm. that is something it, it definitely translates to sales like this is my first experience i still haven't done too many games so um you know res also uh uh did well and was really well received but um the tetris effect in particular one of the things that i noticed was that um america has a lot of awards a right. lot of different yeah. awards. Yeah. There's a lot of different <laughs> enthusiast media have right, right. awards and things. And that, I think, looking at our, our sales numbers, not that they're bad in the other regions, but relative to why it's so much better, um, I can only attribute a lot of it to like attention and awards and stuff like Interesting. that. So it's, it, it actually really does like make a difference. Um, I think this is something that we're, and it's probably good in, in the moment anyway. To, like, the, but something like we're pretty removed from is like that yeah. idea of just like, what effect does this have, if any? Yeah. Uh, and especially like in, in a world where there are so many games coming out every single day uh, yeah. that are just constantly fighting for attention, both big and small. Right. Uh, you know, the the AAA stuff has obviously got an advantage with marketing budgets and stuff like that, but there's yeah. still, you know, sometimes you'll find a four dollar game on steam and you're like this is the best pornography i've ever seen <laughs> uh increasingly yes, yeah so you're finding that to, that to be the case I mean, yeah. awards really kind of help with discoverability as a whole too right so you actually exactly gotta, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. like it, and it's not going to be like oh i'm going to buy this game like sight unseen or not find anything else about it but it's a lot of times even speaking personally it's that little tip over the edge you know where it's like yeah i really did want to check that out or whatever so like you know, forty dollar Tetris game is not the easiest sell in sure. the entire world, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, and believe me, it's not that that was like a decision like that we made lightly, uh, and 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 the game has been on sale and stuff like that. But we did spend a lot more money making that game than people spent making a standard Tetris game, right? And so yeah. I understand the attitude where people are like, "What why is this like?" Uh, Cr crazy expensive for a Tetris game. Yeah. Um, but stuff like that helped. Uh, Interesting. It really helped a lot, I think, to assuage people. Which is like, wow, I, oh, I guess it is worth checking out. And then usually once they checked it out, whether they were in or out, it was still like their decision. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was super cool. So. Did you notice any knock-on effect one way or the other or, with Tetris 99 coming out? And was that something you were aware of? Like, you know, like kind of no. still being in the Tetris world? Or, or did that just well, drop and you were like, oh... So I knew through not even like official means, but yeah. I did know that uh, a re that, that something that another Tetris game was being worked on. Mm -hmm. But um, and I, I knew it was going to be multiplayer focused, but I didn't know it was with Nintendo. I didn't know it was going to be like uh, like free for people on subscriptions, and I didn't know it was going to be Battle Royale, right? Tetris. Um, but like from the second we saw it, we were super happy because it was a it was on another system yeah. that, that, that we're not on and B, it was uh, multiplayer only and we're like, you know, some online aspects but single player only. Right, yeah. And so it was like great. Like if more people remember that they like Tetris and I, I, we saw like a little bit of like an anecdotal thing of people like, oh, I want to practice single player. I'm going to actually buy, buy Tetris Effect. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. But it's I looked like, at the with, numbers. With people talking Tetris yeah. again, did that suddenly... Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, to be honest, it's sad to say, I did look at the numbers and I did not see like a leap. Okay. Um, which I was like, oh my god, oh my god, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, we did what maybe we would have within the range of what we would have done, but it was just cool to see people again like excited about about Tetris again. So um, you know, it definitely wasn't bad for us. Where I think some people were like, oh, what is that? Are you? okay with that or whatever right. it was like no, more power to them you know yeah. we were we were tweeting like to them congrats and 
I think they're doing some, um, I think they're still like figuring out kind of what is, is Tetris, to use the eSport, you know, phrase, like, or how do you, how do you make it uh, competitive on like a larger scale for, right. for an audience and yeah. stuff like that. But I 100% believe that somebody's going to figure that out in like five years from now that that will be a thing. It's amazing how enduring Tetris is. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the, the, like watching the speed runs of like Grandmaster Ace and some of the other stuff. Yes. And like just like there's clearly yes. some kind of audience for spectator Tetris. That's actually Definitely. the cool thing about uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris. <laughs> yeah, we, we stuff, have Tetris too. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> having that, that spectator mode on the leaderboard. It's like, I'm going to watch this yeah. person kick this other person's ass <laughs> and I don't understand even what's happening here because <laughs> I'm playing at a, such a different level way down here right. uh, that just seeing that stuff is... Bunkers. Humbling's not the word. It's just like, <laughs> well, I'm never going to play this game online because I'm going to run into one of these people and just get And And now destroyed. you have the, the Puyo Puyo uh, variant that is just competitive. Right. Puyo just competitive Puyo, Puyo, right? Puyo. Did that yeah. come out in the West? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, Puyo Puyo As Champions. Champions. Yeah. Okay. Was it, uh, was it called Puyo Puyo Esport or something in Japan? Do you remember? I forget what the... It was some, it like, does, very it's, it's some yeah, like yeah. signal yeah. that, like, hey... This is, this is this is our like yeah our, our mass market like attempt at getting everybody mm -hmm. to to play together and that was interesting too because I they sold it for like really cheap which yeah. I just thought was yeah. smart I think we did this, we to get that. that initial group of uh, of players playing mm -hmm. which is always a challenge and that's the other genius part of Tetris 99 is offering that as like the first right. non old game to be offered on Switch Online yeah. too like oh my god like 100% of the players subscribing to the service can get something out of this game yeah. like it, yeah Ge like like genius and yeah. like yeah even watching it was was interesting and even things that i think felt like mistakes at first ended up being positives which is the sign of a of a of an amazing game so like the game didn't really explain itself yeah. very much so you have more reasons to talk about it on the podcast. You have videos that are explaining how it's happening. Right. You have people on social media and stuff mm -hmm. like that doing that. Um, and it, it, it turned out to be a really deep, interesting systems in the game. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, so I'll be really interested to see where they're where they're taking it too. It seems like they're yeah. updating it. I somehow I've like turned into like a. Still or no? Yeah, they, 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 they they're did something almost like recently. A season yeah. Concept, oh, cool. yeah, I think they're they're adding a paid expansion. That will add single player to oh, wow. uh, to it. Like, uh, it would, like I think it's like some more stuff coming down yeah, the line yeah, too. I think stuff, too. Yeah, and they've been so. doing skins on the weekends. I've, I'm like shilling for. I need to get yeah. a piece of, yeah. of their action. <laughs> right. But, um, but yeah, Tetris, Tetris Effect is cool too. Yeah. Tetris yeah. Effect is awesome. It's extremely. Too, you know? Did you find that the VR penetration really changed things or not? Depending on the region. Or? Um. I, we thought that uh, so Res did way better in Japan than it did um, than it, like relative to what it's supposed to do. A lot of people will be like sixty percent America, thirty percent Europe, like ten percent um, Japan, probably depending on the game and the genre and stuff. Right. But just as like a general rule, uh, Res did way beyond that uh, okay. in in Japan, and we thought it was we attributed to like the the VR. PSVR came out there, Oculus and Vive had really not right, yeah. by the time PSVR came out. So, like, people were frothing for, the, for their frothing demand uh, increased in Japan <laughs> until PSVR came out. Uh, and then I think a lot of the launch games did, did, did very, very well. Mm -hmm. um, I think that initial wave has calmed down, and mm -hmm. we saw that in, like, the, the sales numbers for, for Tetris, but we still get like a lot of the times when people talk about it on social media and stuff like that, they're talking about the VR version or because yeah. they, they finally played the VR version or they bought VR sometimes to play it, which is like a ridiculous compliment and like, please don't put that kind of pressure <laughs> on us in the game. Um, uh, but but yeah, it was, it was cool. Um, it was not though like you'd think, oh, more people own VR now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, not that... That, that Res sold better than Tetris Effect, but just relative to the numbers, you'd expect it to maybe be there. Sure. Yeah. And I think actually it's it's cool to kind of like leveled off at least mm. uh, at least in at least in Japan. Yeah. Um, it might still be driving it pretty hard in America. People seem people seem into the, the like when there's a good new PSVR release, 
yeah. you have a, an audience that's really, really into it. Whether it's a hybrid game like ours that plays on both, or right. something that's just PSVR. It seems like we're still in a, in a situation where, like, with, with VR in general, that any any game that comes out that drives headset sales yeah. probably has some kind of knock-on effect to be like, oh, now I'm going to pick up these other ten PSVR games I heard were good. I think that's totally true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so, you know, like it's like Beat Saber. Fuck yeah, Beat Saber. Go like <laughs> get a couple hundred more thousand headsets out there, like just to buy that game. Right. And then when you're starting to look for other games, yeah, hopefully you'll come yeah. for, for Tetris. Speaking of other games, uh, Scott, do you know do, uh, do you know what you're working on next? Do you already I have do. another project lined up? We don't stop. We don't yeah. stop. We're still wow. behind. We're still behind. Okay. Oh, so it's right <laughs> back to well, Okay. Yeah. Gosh. Can't stop. Won't stop. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Ash, well, what, what, what is it? You gotta, yeah, you gotta well, do okay. the follow-up. And, and what is it? <laughs> and what I mean, you have to do the follow-up even if you can't answer. <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Well, what, what was your line? Your line was really good. <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing a Sonic the Hedgehog movie game? Or... Uh... <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, the game, the people oh, want it. Yeah. Do they want it? I think they've even talked about that on the, on, the, on the podcast. And people do want it. I oh, my God. It. Okay. And, but the old, the, the Sonic that you use now is right. the no, yeah. Yeah. That Sonic. Well, that's got to be the pre-order bonus. It's got to be cla classic <laughs> movie Sonic. <laughs> All right, you know what? We're, we're going we're gonna to take a break so I can pitch you on this proper. Great, great. I'm yeah. listening. Scott, the Yakuza Ash, guy. Mark. <laughs> so, yeah, the Yakuza guy. I, I, Sonic the Hedgehog game made by the Yakuza team. Oh, no. You oh, know? Wow. It. Yeah, well, this is what has best. to happen. You're dating mini games, Sonic guess, the Hedgehog and versus Tails. I don't, even, I don't even want to look at your chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jared, Jared, tell them what you want. They know I'm write right. Letters. That's right. Who can they write, write to? to? Write your, to Sega. Twitter, Twitter 1 800 USA don't, Sega. No. <laughs> You get some me. zillion tips while you're at it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to take another break. Thank you all for coming by. Yeah, thank you. Thank and you. we'll be back uh, with more guests shortly. Stay tuned. <laughs> 